Add two new cards and call it a brand new deck. All my fellow and future outlaws, as this is Card Games vs. Humanity, and I am the Anna K, aka Double G. Finally, back with your weekly recap of that Saturday morning cartoon that just couldn't help but convince you that rules need not apply, Duel Monsters. So as per usual, if you enjoyed, don't forget that sub and that bell. Hit that like. Support the channel below if you're feeling it. And leave a comment telling me if you think you can win a championship match versus Mai's Brass. I mean, without looking at Mai's Brass. Boobies. Yugi barely got a wink of sleep last night in his comfy bed, and that's very unfortunate because while he's usually used to hearing the distant screams of his grandfather in the basement when they're right inside of his head, that's just something he can't deal with. His friends risk seeing that morning wood barging in announced claiming that if he does not hurry up and get to the match, he will be decued. Yugi literally just nods his head, mm-hmm, as if he's perfectly okay with that, before doing an epic transformation sequence donning a new cape. Let's do it. Okay, never mind. I guess it was really chilly in the castle because he already has his jacket on in the next scene. Their friends must watch from the balcony because they are not duelists. Only duelists are allowed on the floor, which is basically just a room followed by a bridge, so you're not missing much. My and Bandit Keith are already in the room waiting to talk mad shit to our heroes before Joey claims that at least he didn't have to steal his star chips to make it to the finals of this tournament. He just had to have one given to him so he could enter at all. Honestly, I'm kind of not sure who has less ground to walk on here. Attention! 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 I'm a talking fucking horse head and you better do as I say. Pegasus shows up on the other side of the dueling arena to formally introduce these four finalists as the best of the best in the world. My Valentine, a woman who hasn't won a duel since we got here. And to Keith, the only duelist with some actual merit, but he's actually a well-known criminal and had to steal his star chips to get here. Joey Wheeler, a little novice since about five days ago and wasn't invited. And Yugi Moto, a small child with notable skill, but just by happenstance happens to have one of the very few key items that this man needs and has to steal to resurrect the dead. He's here. As if he fucking wouldn't be? So he needs that prize money for his sister's operation that somehow costs three fucking million. Like, how is it? Is it the entire three million? In what country do you have to pay a three million dollar copay? However, should that champion challenge Pegasus and defeat him, you'll be granted one wish within his power, and you have his word on that. Total scumbag willing to kidnap kids and kill people, but man, Honor just gets his goat. It's time for Mai versus Yugi as they reach their way to the dueling bridge. One, a woman who's never actually won a duel, and the other, a small boy who's somehow still in a temp form despite having little Yugi's mind who has to keep him at bay. Go, Yugi! Hey! Where the hell did he come from? Mai begins the duel by monologuing about how she used to have. Have no friends. But thanks to her hero, she now loses, I mean fights every duel with honor and dignity, and that's exactly what she plans on giving Yugi today. Yugi begins the duel by... I'm gonna get- Okay, that's fucking cheating. Yugi says that Mai can't be a psychic type anymore and can't use her perfume trick in this duel. To which she replies by claiming that she's massively changed as a person and as a duelist. Showing that profound change by starting the duel off with the Harpy Lady, a monster we've never seen before. Puzzled by this completely new move, Yugi summons Gaia, the Fierce Knight, to try to slam down a thousand easy damage on the first turn of this duel. To his dismay though, Mai activates one of the two new cards that she has, Mirror Wall. A trap card that reduces the attacking monsters to half by showing it a reflection of itself without any makeup. Cripple its self-esteem. Mai equips the Cyber Shield to her monster, destroying the poor horsey and inflicting 600 points of damage to Yugi because apparently he forgot that in season one. If you have one back row, that's literally all that matters on the field at this point. Well, like they say, nice Gaia's finish last. Huh, that must be a bit of a dick, because your boy always finishes. Mai is surprised that Yugi fell for such a simple trap and wonders if he's holding back, even though it's been one turn and that was a brand new card that he's never seen before. You might want to, you know, just slow down a little bit. If I can just keep drawing powerful cards like him, this match will be over quick. Yeah, I know, right? If I could just fill my deck with powerful cards so they each draw is usually an effective one, I'd have something resembling, you know, a cohesive deck, not just random splashed together cards with complete luck. That doesn't make any sense. I could just... I could just do that. Yugi then summons my boy, the Summon Skull, who has way too many defense points for some reason right now, and attacks again, but is struck by the mirror wall because he didn't look at the field? Like, the card still stays on the computer screen, right? I just could have looked at the screen in front of you. Mai begins talking mad shit that Yugi isn't trying, that he's holding back, despite the fact that it's been two turns. Two turns. Seriously, this goes on for a while. My Valentine then reveals why she recently started an OnlyFans. The island trips, the clothes, the cars, the prize money. Yugi's fighting spirit has been questioned that his heart is not in this battle, that it's not about his former lover Kaiba, that it's about his new lover Pegasus. They then drag this on for far, far too long, like reaching panic levels of monologuing here. It seriously was like four to five minutes. Maybe I am making too much of this. Yes, yes you are. It's been two turns. Something like ten frickin' minutes later, she finally uses Harpy's Feather Duster to destroy the spellbinding circle that Yugi had in the corner. A card that I guess takes away your battle phase because she wasn't allowed to attack, so I, yeah, that's some sort of a cost, I guess, sure. 
Remember that one, because it doesn't last. Unfortunately for our hero, Yugi, he has to continue to play defense because he cannot attack right now. Putting down a face down Feral M card alongside his summon skull who has 2300 defense for some reason, so you know. That should be able to do quite a bit. Back to Mai, who equips the Rose Whip to her monster, increasing its attack points to 2,400, despite the fact that Cyber Shield only brought it up from 13 to 1,800. So, you know, I'll let you decide where that other 300 came from, because they didn't. Destroying the Feral Imp with about 5,000 Whiplash sounds as she does so, the Yugi then does nothing. Like, he just... I don't even think he draws. He just it just kind of skips his turn. He doesn't play a card. He, he just he just scared. Summoning the cutest fire breathing kitty cat in the land, the harpy's pet dragon. Mai is confident that her victory is coming soon. A monster that gains 300 attack for every harpy on the field. She smokes the summon school quite easily, and then goes back to talking shit about wanting to duel Yugi at his best, not this chump ass version that she's getting right now. And before this, I thought she was making too much of it, but he literally just gave her a free turn. So. I can't, I can't give you anything now, dude. It's, it's, yeah. Hey, Joey, what would you say to yourself every morning in the mirror if you looked like me? I'm gorgeous. I'm such a great duelist. I love me. How's that? Okay, I don't know if I should be scared or flattered at how accurate that was. Yugi decides that he's going to match trap for trap, mirror force for mirror wall, because that's... Lot... What? Summoning the Dark Magician in defense mode as bait for this attack because I guess he doesn't have one frickin' mystical space typhoon. Yugi is quite confident that his plan of mirrors will work effectively. Oh wait, too bad, here's the Shadow of Ice trap, I mean, sorry, accessory card. I almost messed that up, sorry. A trap card from the hand that not only switches your opponent's monsters to attack mode, but apparently forces them to attack on your turn. Oh, what a shame, I just used Harpy's Feather Duster to destroy your mirror force. And now I just destroyed your Dark Magician and did a thousand damage, even though two to three turns ago I couldn't attack on the same turn that I used this card episode over. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget that sub and that bell, that like, and leave a comment telling me if you would use Mirror Wall even in 2022, if it just had no drawbacks whatsoever. Someone would. Tune in next week where we get our first ritual summon of the entire series. A summoning mechanic we haven't heard about whatsoever up until this point. Sweet. And of course, a shout out to all my patrons. If you find yourself being distracted by my chest while you're dueling, just remember this one thing. This one thing. Shit, when'd you guys get here? This has been Man from Earth with all the girls, ladies and gentlemen. You'll see three episodes this week. Enjoy. Later. His friends, his friends risked that morning. <laughs> his friends risked seeing that. Before doing an epic entry. Before doing an epic. Before doing an epic. But Joey needs that prize. Joey needs that prize money. One of them is a woman who's never won a duel. The other is a small boy who's somehow in a tem form. Yet it has. <laughs> Miss Valentine's. Ms. Valentine's. To his dismay, to his, to his dismay though, he might, holy shit.